Hey everyone, so I am heading to work on a Sunday because there's a lot of stuff that has to be done and if you don't do it, bad stuff happens. Um, yesterday I went to Red Cross. Uh, that was a fun competition. I'm gonna put uh, uh, maybe a few videos at the end of this video. Um, and that was fun, but uh, a lot of people are wondering about the cubicle's newest Instagram post. So we recently posted something about having ball bearings inside of our um, lubricant, lubricant one. And I want to explain that, like, it's not a gimmick, it's not something stupid. Uh, I'm going to explain to you um, the basic physics behind it. So uh, this is going to be a physics lesson, not a chemistry lesson. So uh, have you ever tried to scramble an egg um, without opening the shell? Like, have you ever shaken an egg? just the egg to try to scramble it. You could scram you could shake that thing as hard as you want for hours on end and you'll never scramble that egg on the in inside. You'll break the egg and you'll notice that the yolk, everything is fully intact. And there's a reason for that. Um, one more example before I tell you why. Your face goes into an airbag at 70 miles an hour and your face is fine. Um, this is because Forces in a liquid or a gas are evenly distributed. So when you apply a force in one direction, that force in the liquid within the enclosed area will be fully evenly distributed across the whole body of the liquid. That's why your face isn't completely destroyed because the airbag will redistribute the force and that's why the egg will never scramble itself. Um, another example which is way more future is futuristic is um, liquid breathing. So right now, if you accelerate a body, a human body, at thousands of miles an hour, I'm about to hit the interstate, but I'm gonna continue this video because YOLO. Um, don't be like me, kids, don't do this. Uh, so, right, if you try to send someone at very fast speeds to a distant, co to a distant planet like Mars, um, at a certain speed, that person will either black out or their lungs will collapse because the forces are not evenly distributed because there are cavities of air and other things inside the human body. But if you suspended this human body inside uh, some liquid that contains oxygen and like they can breathe with this liquid, it's called liquid breathing, you can look this up on Wikipedia, then the forces become distributed evenly and you could actually accelerate that human body significantly faster without damaging him. And um, I'm, gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you why this is important in the lubricant. So in the lubricant, the ball bearings are to shake up the mixture because the mixture is uh, multi-part. It's the very, very fast azeotropic silicone, but it also has the Teflon and the Teflon will separate out. To distribute the set Teflon, you have to shake it up with that ball bearing inside. And that ball bearing will shake things up so that it's evenly distributed and then you can put it inside your cube. If you don't do this, you will you might get like a bunch of Teflon or no Teflon and a bunch of the liquid, which is only sort of good. But to get the maximum effect, you have to get all of it. Now, the next lesson I'm gonna teach you is something called cavitation. Cavitation is very, very important in today's world. Um, well, maybe not that important. Like you don't need it to survive, but it's a pretty cool concept. So the ball bearing, it, it's a heavy metal object moving inside the liquid and it distributes the force unevenly. But another thing it does is um, when it hits the side of the wall, it creates a small cavity. It's not an air bubble. An air bubble has air inside. This is a bubble with nothing inside. And when that bubble collapses, it, just, it creates a huge amount of force. By huge, I actually mean huge. It's a disparate amount of force that you would expect and it helps things to distribute easier. You might think to yourself, cavitation, that doesn't seem like a big deal. Uh, we see these bubbles all around us when we shake our drinks, when we ride boats or we're in the bath and we put our hand through the water. It doesn't seem like a big deal. But cavitation is actually a tremendous force. Um, propellers, when they go through the water, they create cavities, not air bubbles, but void bubbles with nothing inside. And when the water collapses, the cavitation is actually strong enough to damage the propeller. You can actually read this on Wikipedia. It's a very interesting thing. Um, certain breeds of shrimp 
they have this huge claw and they're able to use this claw to create a huge cavity underwater. And this cavitation is so strong it actually produces flashes of light and the cavitation is so strong that it kills its prey using these void bubbles. Um, cavitation is no joke and these are the forces and the reasons why the ball bearings are able to distribute the lubricant. This is why Lubricant 1 has ball bearings inside of it. And um, I think I'll include those in the description so you can read that and get educated because it's really cool. I want to share one more thing about cavitation before I start talking about other stuff. So, um, an interesting fact about missiles. So, Americans and most Western people, um, when they want to kill a U-boat or a submarine, they'll shoot a torpedo over the air and then dip into the water to hit the submarine. But you have issues between when it gets in the water, finding the submarine, and they want it to travel in the air into the water because things traveling underwater go very slowly. Like, if you stood 50 meters from a gun underwater and you shot the gun directly at yourself from 50 meters, that bullet would not reach you, much less kill you, because water slows things down. Water will slow things down so much. But an interesting thing is, uh, there's a, the country India, they took a whole different approach. Instead of doing missiles above the water, they put their missiles underwater and have super cavitating missiles. So the head of the missile is shaped in a way that it makes this void cavity around the torpedo. So it doesn't have water resistance. It's a void cavity. My phone actually ran out of memory. I had to delete some videos. Um, I'm going to tie this up really soon. So these missiles, they travel underwater um, with a cavity around them. So they go like 600 miles an hour and they actually find their target underwater using this concept of cavitation. Um, so science is a really, really fun thing to learn. Um, it may not help you in, actually it might help you in reality. Um, so you want to learn as much science as possible. Um, so I'm going to tell you about project updates. So you may notice the GTS-2M and the boron treated ones haven't been released yet. Um, that's because we're still waiting on Moyu to ship us the things. Um, things from China take a while. It was supposed to reach last week, but we haven't gotten it yet. Um, hopefully, according to the tracking, it will get here this week and we'll offer it soon. Um, it turns out we will not be offering the Boron Treated GTS-1 and I've been a little slow um, to put out content because this past week had a minor crisis because one of the secret projects hit a huge hitch. Like it set us back about five days, no three days. We were set back, actually more than three days, it was almost a week. We were set back by technical difficulties. but. Um, we're back on track, everything should come according to schedule, and the GTS-2M and the GTS-2M boron treated version will be coming out this week, hopefully. Unless the tracking is wrong or something happens to the package, we should get those things to you soon. So, um, thanks for listening to my explanation about the uh, forces, cavitation, and the bearings inside Lubical One. Uh, I'm going to show you a few, a quick snippet of Red Cross which is a really fun competition. Um, I love, I love y'all northerners. It's, uh, I have fun at northern comps. I love southern comps too, but um, I love everyone. Uh, so I'll talk to y'all in the next one. I'm here with Patrick. We just finished the competition. Um, here with all, all these guys. All these guys. So. Oh, we're, probably tell them where we are. Oh yeah, we are at Bertucci's after the competition. I didn't do any video during the competition because um, I was lazy and exhausted. Um, but this is Patrick. Yeah, I was busy. This is Patrick, my son. From here on. Humphrey the Fifth. He's Humphrey the Fifth. Oh, wow. No. So basically, um, I'm really, really tired. And uh, this competition turned out better than I thought. I got like lots of PBs. But lunch was lunch was pretty fun. I haven't seen your times. How would you do? Um, sub 145 x five. Uh, sub 50 four x four. Those have been eluding me for years. Um, I wanted that for years. Um, what else? The right three not so good, but it was it was a it was a decent comp. Uh, I'm gonna talk about lunch. So during lunch, I don't know. 
so. Oh, you were there? Yeah, you were there. I'm yeah, I was there. We were there. We went to Popeyes. We went to Popeyes to like. This guy. This guy, Eric Zhao. He's like, he's a legend. He's like the realest dude I ever met. And like. Every time you go to lunch, you should definitely go where Eric's going. It's funny because we didn't go with Eric. Yeah, but like, we went to Popeyes and he actually drove to the drive thru and we were inside. But. Awkward. Yeah. We were there with Dana and uh, JKC, and uh, JKC's not here. Yeah, she she had to leave, but it was pretty fun. Like, it was a little irresponsible because I'm supposed to be delegating, but we got back really late. But it was fun. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, foreshadowing, but I'm really gonna miss everyone here. Um, I got some cool news for everyone, maybe. But we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm a little bit more tired than usual. But it, it was a fun competition.